Because then the white person points to the minority, the exactly. one minority that says it's okay to be here. Exactly. It's okay to say reverse racism. It's okay to do all these things. And exactly. they become the example, the prototype of what they want every other minority to feel, see, think, and do. Also, the ones that were sticking up and using their voice were women. This minority was a man. The mm -hmm. patriarchy also, yes. like, I'll listen to a man over a woman type thing. Absolutely. And then I was just even more disappointed in ASU. Sorry, babe. That's where my husband went to school. Forks up. In this case, it was forks down. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>
ostracized, penalized for just being themselves. All these different ways in which there are micro and macro aggressions. Yeah. That that's racism, right? That's a very um, simplified, me just spitting it out version of what it is. But you, a my, a person that's in the margin, a person that is the minority, can never be racist because it assumes a level of power that we simply do not have. Exactly. Racism stems from power. Mm -hmm. Is you using your power to take up space to take away from someone else that doesn't have that? We don't have the power, so they're in no situation, in no way, on any place on God's green earth, mm -hmm. can there ever be a minority person that is racist? It is impossible. Yeah. Now there are people that have prejudices and things. Those are some other nuances we can talk about. Yeah. People spitting on reverse racism. It does not exist. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Stop it, Brad. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hear about it. <laughs> like, Stop it, Spencer. Okay. <laughs> Golly. No, that's real. That's real. And then does I, not exist. I was, I mean, okay. <laughs> Every, I feel like every time I say I was highly disappointed in the minority in their response, but I said what I said, what I said, I was disappointed to see the Asian man um, oh, yeah. sticking up for them like, because absolutely. that is an assimilated Asian man who's yes. in the sunken place. Yes. It doesn't even He's, understand absolutely. his whole culture and what whiteness has done to his people. Here's the, here's to protect the, whiteness is an assimilated character trait. Absolutely. He's like, they're not doing anything. Why can't you just, brother, this is not their space. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the thing that is really, black and brown people, bodies, particularly when it's in the body of a woman, a female mm -hmm. black and brown body, is not allowed to be upset or to be, in, in you know, just to be ignited about anything. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to because it all of a sudden then, it, whoever else is on the other side of that becomes a victim. Mm -hmm. So here's this, this man who looked like he was from Asian descent, I don't want to assume, mm -hmm. young boy, comes to defend the white, the white he takes? Mm -hmm. You're in the multicultural system. Well, they're not even doing anything. Why can't you just let them be? Because the space is not for them. We are here to feel safe. Yeah. I don't feel safe when you got a... a uh, police lives matter and you are like that's not what this space is about yeah. so you're the odd man out it's like it like you said a sunken place or an uh an uncle tom like mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. stop it's it's like when the when the uh the slave is standing on the back of the plantation talking about massa they running away massa mm -hmm. massa they over there i saw them go that way massa mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stop yeah it's not okay. It was very disappointing, but also not surprising yeah. because that's a way, like you said, it's assimilation. It's a way, it's a, a way of protecting yourself yeah. because, yeah. you know, it's assimilation. And also there's probably a layer to him or a part of him that doesn't desire to see conflict or to experience conflict yeah. or to be in the middle of getting it, getting in trouble and all of those things. So all those things are nuanced and complicated and layered for sure. Um, but that was the other reflection I had. It's like, oh, okay, why you? Why does it have to be you? Because then the white person points to the minority, the exactly. one minority that says it's okay to be here. Exactly. It's okay to say reverse racism. It's okay to do all these things. And exactly. they become the example, the prototype of what they want every other minority to feel, see, think, and do. Also, the ones that were sticking up and using their voice were women. This minority was a man. The mm -hmm. patriarchy also, yes. like, I'll listen to a man over a woman type thing. Absolutely. And then I was just even more disappointed in ASU. Sorry, babe. That's where my husband went to school. Forks up. In this case, it was forks down. <laughs> I'm sorry. ASU be on some... All Actually, these, no. All, all these, these colleges. All this, education as a whole be on some BS. Absolutely. This education system had us singing... In 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. This is well, this is the education that we were receiving as young children, mm -hmm. yeah. impressionable minds. Yeah. Now he murdered and genocide yeah. and all these different things, which is what he actually was. Yeah. He was a thief. He yeah. discovered nothing. Yeah. But this is sorry to no. your point. Education be on some BS. Yeah. Like you said forks down. Uh, yeah, forks down in that their response. They were literally going to charge these girls. I don't even know what the <laughs> charges were. Why are you charging them? I don't, that's the thing. The people in power are, are white and upholding whiteness. Yeah. So then whiteness in order to protect itself, will you make minorities an example? We'll make an example of anyone that comes up against whiteness period. Yeah. So that's first off. Yeah. And then the only reason the charges were dropped is because uh, BLM, Phoenix Metro and other advocacy groups like it locally said, sign, call, stand up, show up. For, for these events and these um, citywide uh, meetings and things like that. And because of the advocacy that went forth, 
they drop the charges, but then ask the, the girls of color, the women students of color, to write a three-page paper on how they could have acted more civil in their request to remove the white bodies from the multicultural space. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. What? What? What are we For talking why? about? For why? What For are why? we actually talking about? I'm confoogled. ASU. Me is confusion. <laughs> Do you hear yourself talking? Stop. Do you hear your, so you're going to have the Stop. people of color who fought for the multicultural space, write a three page paper and then, <sighs> about how they could have acted more civil to remove the whiteness from the multicultural space. Sweetie. What are we talking about? It's the upholding of white supremacy. Oh my me. gosh. Y'all better it's get it the, right. It's the valuing white tears. Mm -hmm. In this case, white men, white or bruised ego. Mm -hmm. We'll go there. It's mm -hmm. the it's upholding the bruised white ego. It, it instead of standing up for the people that actually fought for this space so they can feel safe. Yeah, the people. It, it, it it's outrageous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they completely the the lens through which everyone sees it is whiteness. So of course the girls look bad mm -hmm. because the the lens through which people are viewing it is through whiteness, Absolutely. through the institutions that were created by whiteness, mm -hmm. through the um, rules that were created by whiteness, yes. through the uh, you know what I mean X Y and Z that was created by whiteness. Yes. Of course they come off in a bad light. Yeah. You have to change the goggles. Yeah, take off those glasses and put on the glasses, mm -hmm. the other glasses, mm -hmm. and then you can actually see for what it is. Yeah, this. Go ahead. This is another thing that really bothered me. I think one of the Wahite said, because um, I don't really care to know their names. Yep. <laughs> we'll call them Brad and Spencer. <laughs> Brad and Spencer. <laughs> um, one of them was like, you know, we're not intending, you know, they didn't come in there with guns blazing, but they did come in there wearing, wearing and proudly presenting a few things that you know mm -hmm. political bit, statements yeah you were making just, a statement exactly. with your white presence. but they they just but they want to sit in their ignorance mm -hmm. they really love to sit in there and this is what people white people do mm -hmm. they absolutely love would love to fall back on mm -hmm. the morals of their intention instead of the consequences of their actions mm. Ooh, say it again because it took me a second to get caught up to the truth one more time they want to fall back and stand on the quote unquote morals of their intention My God. instead of the consequences of their actions. Sweetie, baby, intentions <laughs> do not erase implications of actions. Yes. 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 So it doesn't matter. It, it does not matter what your intentions were. Mm. Your actions did this. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter. I've been here for almost five years. And I tell you what, if you actually care about someone, right? If you yeah. actually were trying to, try to create a, a space that's equal and both parties can feel welcome, yeah. it doesn't matter what your intention is. Yeah. What matters is your action and the way the person received what you did. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's what you have to so drop it. Oh, I didn't intend. I, mm. We weren't. It doesn't matter, Brad and Spencer. <laughs> yeah. The morality yeah. of your intention weighs not yes. in this marketplace. Yes. It don't matter. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, that was my little thing yeah. about that. I um, And this is the other thing that people just aren't thinking about. Like the white leaders, the decision, the white decision makers of ASU that decided to go ahead and press charges were not thinking about the overall narrative that they are communicating to society and yes. every other person of color that's a student in their school. Screaming the bullying. Correct. The, <laughs> the, narr the overarching oh narrative that you are communicating by pressing charges on people of color is that you can have a space and we want you here because we want to present that we are diverse and we care about we want that money that because we want funds. that money. But if you come again, if you decide to stand up against systemic oppression yeah. and if you decide to stand up against whiteness and, and all of the things that um, are, are wrapped up in that category, yes. you will be punished. Yeah. That they're saying you can have your own space, mm -hmm. but white people can go wherever they want. This is the whole place is white. So that's what they're saying. You're not, mm. you're not worth worthy of having a sacred space where you feel safe and comfortable wow. without the presence of whiteness. Whiteness will always be a part of it because wow. we value whiteness more than we value you being comfortable. We, wow. We're just front facing baby. Yeah. We just want, we're just here for the money, put that oh black God. square up, throw up a fist. Yep. Cause we want to look like we're about it, but we don't want to actually be about it. Yeah. 
So BLM Phoenix Metro, if you don't follow them, this is how I, one follow of the ways them. I stood informed on this issue. And in, in addition to my husband c- keeping me informed, um, but part of their carousel post about this issue says this, and I think they say it really well to tell black indigenous people of color directly impacted by racism and harassment that they need to learn how to be more civil when confronting racism is asking them to assimilate to white culture and it's racist within itself. The inference here is that because they are not civil, then they must be savages. Black indigenous people of color people are not savages. And because what's the def- who created the definition of savages? White good, people. Good old Christopher Columbus and his uh, Christian pilgrims that mm-hmm. came over with their little aprons and skirts and stuff and yep. burnt people alive and, and murdered millions listen, of people. Listen, and if you haven't what? if you haven't read history, I would encourage you because they they it was a massive genocide yes. of native people yes. because they thought they were the holy chosen ones and everyone else besides them were savages. So that gives us permission based upon our faith yes. to kill an entire generation of yes. people and then take their land and then sit around a Thanksgiving table and say, thank the Lord yes. for the blessing of the native people and their land that we stole. They don't even mention the native people. Thank the Lord for what we've, we've, we've with the own, the sweat of our own hands yeah. have gathered and what we have done. Yeah. They thought black people were savage just because they didn't understand our language because we didn't stand up mm-hmm. to, uh, erect and straight. Like we had something up our asses, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and mm-hmm. we didn't, we didn't act like Anglo-Saxon white people because of that. They, 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 um, said that we were savages. Mm-hmm. Those were the the metrics upon which a savage and a non-savage was, a civil person and a savage was, has always been, the ruler has always been shifted and geared towards white. Yes. And I think the lesson here, like if there is an encouragement to black indigenous people of color, and this is something Kendall actually reminded me of the other day, is that there are more of us than there are of them. Hello? Huh? The minority is the majority. So if we can gather together and stand up against this systemic oppression of whiteness and white supremacy, they will have to fall. We don't have to give in. And that's what I appreciate about what's happening in this space is that those girls aren't writing that paper. (laughs) Like we're not writing it. It's a no for me. It's a no. (laughs) Because what you're not going to do is have me bow down to white supremacy and oppression. We off that. Making me think that I have somehow owe them an apology. No, they owe us an apology. It was a multicultural space. Face, mm-hmm. bro. Yeah. It was not about you. And in what world did you think a person of color was going to feel comfortable with you sitting there as mm. a white hetero, like a male yeah. with a blue lives matter? Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. That. So if you are truly ignorant, mm-hmm. ignorance must be bliss. And that is racist Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's a privilege to be that ignorant. Yeah. So either you're really ignorant or you knew exactly what you were doing. Either way, it's evil. Yeah. Because to be that ignorant is privilege. It is a yeah. privilege to be that ignorant of the world around you that you mm-hmm. can't even fathom that someone would be offended by your presence there with a Blue Lives Matter. Oh. Bro, wake up. Wow. Over the last three, four years, yeah. you really didn't think that that would, could be a problem? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Stop it, Brad. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, Spencer. <laughs> it's a no. Yeah, it's a no. It's a no. It's a no. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I think, I think that that encompasses everything that we want to say. Yeah, right? and sorry. Final thoughts is what I was going to say. I was going to say final thoughts just really um encouragement for the two young women. Mm-hmm. I think there were three of them actually. Three, okay. Mm-hmm. H- however many, mm-hmm. all the young women mm-hmm. that were there standing up for their own space mm-hmm. and not being silent because uh oppression would have them not have said anything. Yeah. Just to be in that space, like feeling very uncomfortable in their own space that they fought mm. for and not say anything, that's oppression. That's yeah. peak oppression. Yeah. So the fact that that, that that they stood up in their own bodies, yes, 10 toes down and mm-hmm. said, No, we're not gonna do it. And even when those boys were back, we're gonna get the damn who cares, Brad and yeah. Spencer. Yeah, we're gonna stand up. So I'm really proud of them mm-hmm. and we're supportive of them. And um, yeah, I'm glad that people stood up and got the charges dropped which is it's just it's just disgusting asu yeah. you're disgusting yeah i'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm over all these you guys education. gotta get it right you gotta get it right because that was not right you gotta fix it yeah but proud of the the young women yeah same
thanks for joining us, guys. We just wanted to do this little rant and give our thoughts on this viral video that's happening in our city, in our town. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jesus is very connected to social politics. That's what his his very birth on earth was a political statement. And the more that I read the Bible from a lens of liber- liberation and justice, the more I'm surprised that I've been taught and fed a white supremacist lens of the Bible. Hello. And I'm over it. Hello. So this was for you. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for being along the journey. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Say bye, Maeve. Say bye. All right. <laughs>